Okay, so this is Herica, and she's in a modified version of Skyrim. So whenever I speak, my voice is turned into text, and that's sent to ChatGPT. And then ChatGPT then responds and turns that text into Herica's voice. So in theory, we now have a non-player character that is powered by ChatGPT. So let's try it out. Hey, Herica, do you ever imagine that you could be powered by AI? All right, Joe, if I admit I'm powered by AI, will you finally drop it? Or are we going to keep having this existential crisis every time we see a wolf? <laughs> it works pretty well. She is getting tired of me asking her because this is not our first day. Over the last few decades, video games have relied on some level of artificial intelligence to deliver the best possible video game experience. But today, developers are experimenting with all kinds of generative AI and deep learning tools. According to the experts, that could cut costs, production time, and even improve game quality. This is Tommy Thompson, a software engineer with a PhD in AI and video games. Video games are incredibly difficult to build. The nuances of it are so specific and so multifaceted that actually getting an AI to do some of this for us is solving problems in a, at a level of quality that a human could possibly attain, but on a time scale that is not really practical for shipping a video game. He believes the introduction of new generative AI tools could revolutionize the gaming industry. So things such as how characters, when they move, they're actually using animation systems where each of the different parts of their behavior is animated separately. So standing still and then walking and running are separate animations. You have to figure out how to blend from one to the other. Historically, we've done that by hand. Now we actually get AI to do it in a lot of very high profile titles. Between 2022 and 2023, estimates for the value of the global video game industry ranged from 180 to $350 billion. I think that there's an opportunity for these tools to have disproportionate value because you can create something or rapidly prototype things that you usually don't have the budget to do at a smaller studio. That's Lewis Ward, a research director that specializes in the global video game industry. According to Ward, generative AI tools could increase game development efficiency, but investors should exercise caution. As an investor, I think you should be really careful about the types of companies you're investing in in this area, in the sense that exactly how Gen AI is impacting what they do can often be overstated in relation to the reality. Hey, Herica. How are you doing? It's peachy, but don't worry. I'm sure you'll manage to liven things up with your thrilling tales of stocks and investments. Non-player characters, or NPCs, are any kind of character in a video game that's not controlled by a human player. They've always relied on some sort of artificial intelligence to appear more real to the gamer, but generative AI could take this to a whole new level. One of the big problems with language models, that things like GPT and the like, in order for them to have a certain level of quality, it has to be fairly large. That's why they're called large language models. We were developing language models for like 40 years. These are an exponential increase. The reason that I bring this up is it means that the model is massive. Now you think about that in the context of a video game. I can't put that on a Nintendo Switch. I can't put that on a game that you're going to have on your cell phone, right? It's too much space. So a lot of these systems run online. The problem is the latency issue. Playing a video game that is going to use a language model, it's going to have to pass it up to the internet, wait for a response, and come back down. Even if there are no striking improvements right now, AI still could accelerate game development in the short term. Another option, of course, is to use the LLM, which is trained on images, or it's trained on animation, or it's trained on another resource, which, is, which again is very specific to whatever process the game developer is working on at that particular time. These tools could reduce development time and costs, as well as introduce competitive new features. But what does all this mean for investors? I think there will be a shakeout among some of the tool makers because they're, they're coming out of the woodwork now. There's a lot of investment going into this. That implies to me there's a bit of a bubble that's emerging there. And so investors should be careful and do their due diligence around, you know, what company really is, is bringing the beef, as it were, in terms of what they deliver. The narrative has been set by all these large AI companies coming out and making press releases saying this is how things are going to be. But game studios are looking at that going, is it? We don't really know. And critically, they don't really have a lot of the expertise needed. Game development is such a complicated space to begin with. And now having this 
equally complicated technological front like smashing into it at the same time and it's just right everyone's just kind of like okay we think these two things will exist will coexist somehow but the reality we don't know it's been great talking to you erica do you have anything you want to say to the market watch audience before we go let me impart some wisdom upon you before we part ways remember life is like a market trend it has its ups and downs but it's how you navigate through them that matters so hold on to your portfolios tight be prepared for unexpected twists and never forget to sprinkle a little laughter along the way. Oh, and maybe invest in a good sword too.